Hey everybody, welcome to another episode of Unboxing and Stuff. Today we're going to be taking a look at the BF-TD 512 DMR UHF Handy Talkie. So let's go ahead and get in the box, see what's in there, and then we'll go ahead and do some power testing. I'll go over a brief overview of the programming software and then give you final thoughts and let you know what I think about this Handy Talkie and if it may or may not be right for you. Okay, so let's go ahead and see what comes in our box here. Open right up. And there are some additional accessories, which we will go over after we see what's in the main box. So first and foremost, we have our BF-TD 512 radio. This is in the 400 to 480 megahertz range. We have our battery here. This is a 2000 milliamp hour battery, and that just clips right on. We have our charging base. We have our UHF 400 to 470 antenna. And that just screws right on there. We have a hand strap and a clip that goes on the back. And then to put the clip on a little easier, it's easiest to actually do it with the battery off. So let's go ahead and get this on there. Okay, so now I'm going to put the battery back on, just clips right into place, I get a nice belt clip on there. I personally don't like hand straps, so I won't be using that myself. Uh, and then we also have a power cord. This is the US version with the standard US plug. So let's go ahead and move that box over and talk about the additional accessories that this one came with. So here we have an earpiece that comes with a little foam pad as well. Uh, I'm not particularly fond of this style earpiece, but uh, it will function and it should work just fine. We also have a USB programming cable. And a speaker mic has an emergency button up top and a standard push to talk button on the side. There are two other additional accessories you can get for this radio. One is a six seat charger, so you can charge up to six batteries at one time or six radios if they're all mounted. And they also do make a 2700 milliamp hour extended battery. So really quickly before we move forward, I did want to show you how to connect the programming cable and the speaker mic and all the other accessories like the earpiece as well. So just a flathead screw right here. It's not very tight, but it just makes it a little easier to unscrew it if you have a driver. You would also use a coin or something. Then what we're going to do is take this connector here and it has a little lip on the top. So you're going to slide the lip up in there and then press down on the lower side. And then you're just going to snug this up. All you want to do is get this finger tight, get it nice and snug but you don't actually want to take a screwdriver and rip that real tight because what it can do is it can actually rip out the threads and then you can't mount anything here. So that is perfectly fine. Just nice and snug with your hand and then you're all set up, ready to go. Okay, we're gonna go ahead and discuss some of the specs and capabilities of this radio. It has a few different frequency range options. There's VHF at 136 to 174 megahertz. There's a UHF 350 to 390 megahertz. UHF 400 to 480 megahertz, which is the particular model we have here, and UHF 450 to 520 megahertz. This radio is capable of housing up to 32 zones with up to 16 channels in each zone for a total of 512 channels. This radio is narrow and wideband channel spacing capable. The power output is four and a half watts on high power and one watt on low power. This is a DMR tier two radio, and it is also capable of transmitting an FM analog. This is an IP67 rated radio. It is capable of running ARC4 encryption. It has a built-in GPS and a man down feature, which triggers an alarm when the radio tilts beyond a certain degree set in the software. It has a lone worker mode, 
which requires a response from the user at set intervals and triggers an alarm if the response is not received. It also has emergency alert functions and is capable of DMO pseudo trunk, allowing the use of both time slots on a single DMR frequency. It has digital and analog dual modes to receive both analog and digital signals on the same channel and can automatically switch into the needed mode for efficient communications. Okay, next we're gonna go over the basic layout of this radio. We have a on off and volume control knob here. We have an LED light. We have a 16 position channel knob, a programmable button with two positions. We have obviously our antenna. We have our push to talk key. We have two more programmable buttons with long and short press. We have our menu key, which is a green key, our home key, and a selection key left and right going through the menus and an up and down key to go through the menu. And obviously on the back, we already have our clip. So let's go ahead and turn this radio on. And so if we go here, we're starting out in a DMR zone in 446 right now. So go menu, we have our contacts, scanning, zone, SMS, call log, and settings portions here. <coughs> So if you go in contacts, you can see everyone you have in there. Scanning, I don't actually have a scan group built at the moment. Zones, you can go in there and select multiple zones. Uh, I only have one zone currently. SMS, you can come in here and on DMR mode, you can actually send text messages to other radios that are also DMR. So there you go, our preset built, hello. We have our call log which shows all your calls, answered, missed, outgoing, and you can also clear that record. Then we have our settings, finally. And we have settings here, which these are more general settings. And we have our system info. And then finally we have our channel configure, where you can come in and you can make some changes to this channel in particular that you're on. Um, without the keypad below, there's actually less changes you can make. You know, you can't change frequency and stuff like that. So timeout timer, transmit contact, CC index, choose slot, your time slot, receive group list. Those are the changes you can make there. And then really quickly we'll go to an analog channel so you can see what changes you can make in there, which is only timeout timer and then your PL tone. Okay, next what we're going to do is go ahead and get this set up on a watt meter and do some power tests. Okay, let's fire this guy up here. So we are connected into a digital watt meter rated up to 200 watts. And out of the watt meter, we're going into a 100 watt capable dummy load. Uh, precursor, all this is Amazon stuff, not any super high end stuff. So I don't know how accurate this is going to be in the low end. I just always throw that out there just to know that there may be discrepancies versus if you had a very nice uh, refined watt meter that was set up for low power. So just keep that in mind. So we're going to start out on the low end of the band and that is on 400 megahertz and we're on low power. And it looked like we got up to three quarters of a watt there. Go to high power. And you saw we have 4.26 there. So then we're gonna go ahead and go into our 446, closer to the middle of the band. And we're on low power. And it looks like we got about a quarter watt there. Switch over to high power. And we got about three watts. And we'll go to 480, which is the high end of the band. Start out on low power, about a quarter watt, and high power, about 2.3 watts. 
And then finally we go to analog, start on low power as well. So about a quarter watt and high power about three watts. And that's on the 446 megahertz. So next we're gonna go ahead and take a look at the PC programming for this radio. Just do a quick overview of the programming software. Okay, here we are taking a look at the programming software for the BFTD512. And this is actually the same general software as the uh, BFTD511 that we previously reviewed. However, I will point out that uh, the options and setup within the menu are uh, a little bit different. They're a little bit less in this one than, than the other model. So let's go ahead and start running through this software. First here you can see we have our frequency range, serial number, and our firmware version. In our general settings we have the device name, device ID and repeater ID, a program password, we have our basic uh, three options for a, uh, encryption to include the ARC4, which is the most advanced in this menu. And we have our English language selected. We have our Vox options, transmit, preamble, and talk around durations, battery saver option. Uh, what you want the channel display mode to be. I always like to do frequency and channel if I can. We have the disable all LEDs, reject, reject strange call, direct mode, menu button disable, display call and alias, and erase enable. Then we have our tone alerts below here. Disable voice indication, channel free indication, talk permit, and receive low battery interval. Then we have our button settings, and on this one we have three separate buttons with a short and long press. Long press, you can change the duration, which is set to a thousand milliseconds or one second. You have your one touch call settings down here. We have our short messages here. You can see I wrote hello in there. You could put anything you'd like. Uh, how are you? Checking in, all is good, whatever uh, kind of messages you might need to send within your businesses or within your group. We have our menu settings here, our hang time of 10 seconds. We have all our address list here options, scan options, call log options, our utilities options, and our intercom config options. Then here we have our signaling systems, decode device, remote monitor, and remote monitor duration. Our digital red alert here, we have system one currently disabled, but you have regular silent or silent with voice if you'd like to do a, some sort of an alarm. Our address list, digital, simplex, we have our call group 99 that we've used for testing. Our receive group list, as you can see here, we got the simplex over in the members group, and you can add or remove things as you see fit. So we have channels, we have our zones, we have one zone. So here's that zone, and we have channels one through four uh, pre-filled out here, and five through 16 are completely blank because I don't have anything there, I deleted them out. And then here, let's take a look at our DMR446. And this is a digital channel, no scan list. Here you can select your color code. You can make it a receive only, have priority interrupt as an option, TDMA bypass mode, and then you can select your slots, pseudo trunk option. And then we have here our receive frequency, our receive group that we selected, emergency alarm, alarm acknowledge and call indication. And on this side we have transmit frequency, the default address, emergency systems, power levels, timeout timers, admit criteria, and private call acknowledge. And then moving down we have an analog channel. So this one is set to wideband, no scan list. You can have auto scan as well. Uh, squelch level is three, allow talk around, receive only. 
We have our transmit, or I'm sorry, we have our receive frequency and our DPL or PL for that channel. And then over here on the transmit side, we have our transmit frequency with where you can see we do actually have a PL uh, enabled and you can also do DPLs. You do the plosive. This is, I believe, to change the phase of the uh, PL itself. We have our power level, timeout timer, timeout timer rekey, busy channel lockout, and voice close. And then finally on the left here we have our scan. So we have 4,000 milliseconds or four second hang time. And then you have our actual scan list where you can add and remove channels as you see fit to get whatever your needs are taken care of. So that's a brief overview of the BFTD 512 programming software. Let's go ahead and get this radio out in the field and do some testing. Okay, so here we are out in the field. It's a terrible, rainy, miserable day outside. So we're gonna do our best to try and see if we can get this uh, long distance contact. So we're gonna go ahead and try on DMR and uh, see how it goes. Okay, testing one, two, three, long distance test in miserable weather. Uh, how do you copy me on the 512? Okay. One, two, three, long distance test in miserable weather. Uh, how do you copy me on the 512? I copy you great, loud and clear, uh, nice audio signal. How do you copy? I copy you great, loud and clear, uh, nice audio signal. How do you copy? Roger that. Yeah, I have you the same, uh, very very clear strong sounding signal um, let's go ahead and cut over to analog and we will try and see how that goes okay testing one two three three two one how do you copy now okay testing one two three two one how do you copy now uh i do copy you uh, good audio, intelligible, I can hear what you're saying, but there is a background layer of static. Uh, I do copy you. Uh, good audio, intelligible, I can hear what you're saying, but there is a background layer of static. Roger that. Yeah, I have you about the same. I can hear your audio sounds pretty clear, but it is muffled underneath a lot of uh, static as well. So I think that uh, test is good for this radio. Okay, so here we are to talk about our final thoughts on the BF-TD 512. What do we think about this radio? Well, I think it's a pretty cool radio. It does everything that it's supposed to do. It's a simpler radio than some of the previous radios that we've looked at. So that may actually be a benefit depending on the use case that you plan on using this for. You know, if this actually houses all the features that you are interested in, uh, then this may be a good good option uh, because without the keypad, you know, we're not able to do uh, custom frequencies and a few other things that you can get in there and do. So <clears throat> that actually may be a benefit if you're buying this and want it set up for your users, but not necessarily have the ability for them to go in and make changes of any kind. So that may be a plus for you. Uh, obviously, as you saw on the range test there, we made an incredible uh, long distance range test with clear line of sight, uh, approximately 34 miles from where I was up on a hill to uh, my friend's place where he had his handy talkie uh, piped into an external antenna to get above the roof line of his neighborhood. And, uh, you know, we had pretty darn good communications considering that, you know, this is only putting out around three watts on frequency as we're going over the air. So that is pretty cool. Um, the audio quality sounds pretty good in my opinion. And uh, I think this definitely would be an option and contender. Uh, the things that I don't like as much or personal preference wise uh, is that I wish these keys were also uh, customizable somewhat to uh, go through and program. Uh, you know, you do have the six options here with the three keys for long and short press. Um, so, you know, it's not necessarily a bad thing, but that's just my personal preference. I always like as much uh, ability to go in and customize things as possible. 
the same thing with the 511. I wish that their options were also available to switch this from uh, the 16 channels uh, per zone over to 16 zones and have more channels in each zone. So like I said, I don't know if that is something that is possible via actual software or if that's actually a hardware issue and it's just not capable. So uh, for what it is though, I think it works great. If this meets your needs, 16 channels per zone, hey, you're good to go. So uh, I do like the fact that this has some pretty good accessories and the water uh, resistance of the IP68 rating, or I'm uh, sorry, IP67 rating is also very valuable. Uh, as is where I live, there's a lot of moisture and it rains and it's foggy and stuff like that a lot. So, uh, you know, something like this is really nice to be able to be outside, be working or functioning using a radio and not have to worry about it uh, having any issues. So, I think that about wraps up my review for this radio. If you have any more questions, feel free to leave them in the comments below and uh, we'll see if I can answer them or get answers for you if I don't know them. Uh, if you're interested in any of the watt meter or the cables or any of the stuff that I used in this video, I'll have those down in the description below. I will also leave a link to the website, the Bellphone website for this radio, uh, if you guys wanna go check it out a little bit further at that point. So I think that wraps everything up. I hope you guys enjoyed the review and we will catch you on the next one. Thanks for watching.